Hello and welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial. In this video we're going to be creating something like this where there will be a liquid and there will be an obstacle. The main thing of this tutorial is to show you how to create an obstacle and some of the uses you can do with it. Um, so yeah, it's going to look something like this. Let's go ahead and get started. So go ahead and click New, File, General. And with this cube, because we're not going um, to really show you all the details about fluid, just go ahead and create uh, just a quick fluid like I just did. Um, now you can see that there's a cube here. I'm just going to hurry and take care of that by removing or by changing the directory of my path here. And now we're good to go. So this is what yours should look like. If we go into the Z wireframe, uh, we can make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to move it this way a little bit and a little bit higher. Now if you can't see what's going on, I'm just positioning the cube up here in the top right corner of if I'm in the front view and just I can leave it in the middle that way. I'm going to hit Shift A Add and I'm going to do an icosphere, make it a little bit smaller and go back into the front view and if this is the cube, the water is going to come down like this. So I want to position the ball somewhere where the water is going to hit it. And take the cube, come in here to type fluid, and go into inflow. And a lot of these things that I'm going really quickly over, uh, these are things that uh, I've showed in another video. So you can go ahead and check those out. I'm just going to put negative 1.5 uh, inflow velocity, which will take on the x-axis right here and push water negative by 1.5 meters a second, which is this way. So it's going to come down this way and hit that. Let's go ahead and click on our domain and click bake. Now because we don't really have too much going on, our water is going to, or our liquid, we don't know what it is, is going to come down and we can see that it would hit this if we were to have our obstacle working. And this is the problem most of you probably have tried and you're like, ah, oh, why isn't this obstacle working. And it's because there is actually another fluid type that we need to assign to the sphere. So let's go into the physics option here for the sphere and click fluid and go to type and obstacle. And honestly these default values are pretty good for most situations. The, the main thing that they do is it just changes it changes the way that Blender calculates uh, how this water is going to hit this obstacle. So like for instance the volume initialization is going to either be a volume, shell, or both. Meaning it's either going to calculate when it hits the volume or when it hits the shell on the outside. Or both. Um, and a lot of these other things I'll just have to do with the way that it, it slips on the surface. So let's go ahead, I'm just going to leave these the same uh, you probably don't need to change them, honestly. You can change them to see what happens. Uh, but now, if we click on our fluid and click bake, it won't take very long again as well because we haven't. There's a couple other changes that we should make. Um, sorry if you have a little bit of a slower computer and I'm making you bake through, and you're like, "Ah, oh, this is taking forever to bake." Uh, bear with me. Uh, you don't have to actually click them if you do, don't want to. So now we can see our fluid. I'm going to change back to the solid view. You can see it's still, like, it looks kind of weird, I think. Our fluid doesn't look like fluid anymore when it hits this. And that is because we need to make sure we change, when we go into boundary, we need to change remove air bubbles. Or we need to change it to being off so that it, it doesn't remove air bubbles. Now what this does is it makes the liquid less sticky to each other. It, it allows it to, to create air in it. So if we were to render this again, I'm going to go ahead, or I'm not render, if we were to bake it, I'm going to bake it, you don't have to again. Um, but now we can see that our object now falls a little bit more freely. In fact, like look right here, we have this air bubble. Um, and we have this one, it's not connected here, but this, this probably wouldn't happen the same way uh, without that unchecked. Sweet, okay, next. One other thing, and it's going to sound kind of obvious, but the higher resolution of the fluid, the better it's going to look. Uh, second off, 
the higher the resolution of the fluid, the better the physics is going to react with each other. Uh, it's almost like if you were to have one cube fall and hit something, and you, if you'd have a thousand cubes that equaled the same size as the one cube falling, it would have a better reaction to in particles. I don't know if that made any sense actually, now that I think about what I just said. But ultimately, you're subdividing what you're, you're, you're subdividing how the physics reacts with the other object. So you can, it's going to have more vertices to be able to play with. So let's go ahead and crank that up to at least 100. I think 100 will be good. Um, and I'm also going to change this to maybe 90, just so that we can see what's going to be in our viewport. And I, this is going to take a little, like a second, so um, just stay with me. I'm going to quick, quick, quickly bake this. Sweet. So now that it's done baking, we can go ahead and watch it. And because of all the subdivisions, this looks a ton better. Our physics looks like it's reacting with this a lot better. And overall, the simulation looks a lot cleaner. And I hope that you've been able to learn something from this tutorial. And if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask it in the comments. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.